countless studies show that people who eat more fruits and vegetables live long and prosper. Um, because, well, they are natural, full of antioxidants, etc., etc., etc. Standard dietary advice encourages us to eat five fruits and vegetables every day for better health. Now, the eating fruit is relatively easy, but broccoli, cauliflower, and kale, well, they can be an acquired taste. So for many people, the five fruits and vegetables looks more like five fruits. Does it matter? Well, fruits and vegetables are not the same thing. Biologically speaking, fruits develop from flowers and they have seeds, whereas vegetables are actually plant bodies and they have no seeds. Of course, there are exceptions. Biologically speaking, tomatoes and squashes are fruits, but we classify them as vegetables. And maize is another oddball. It's a biological fruit, but when you eat it on the cob, it's considered to be a vegetable. However, officially it is a grain, because grains are in fact harvested seeds of grass, and that's what maize is. Is this all just simply semantics? No, because fruits and vegetables are also chemically speaking different. Now, the sugar that dominates in culinary vegetables when they have sugar, which for the most part they actually don't, it only happens when the plant part is found underground, that is it's a root vegetable. Well, the sugar there is going to be glucose. While culinary fruits are typically full of sugar, but the sugar they're full of is fructose. At a quick glance, the two sugars look pretty much the same. In fact, our tongues don't compute that they are different, but our livers do. And fructose has a bad reputation. A really bad reputation. But no worries. When Mother Nature is packaging the fructose in fruit, she's adding fiber. And it's the fiber that makes accessing the sugar problematic, especially since we don't have the correct enzymes to do the job. So the fiber plus the differences in how fructose is processed Is this enough to make it all work, despite the fact that fruit is full of sugar? Because we're told sugar is bad and fruits are good. Hmm, confused? There's definitely something not quite right with the story, and it is a story we're constantly being told. Okay, okay, okay. We're not being told to eat five fruits and no vegetables. but If you're someone who hates vegetables and you're following the guidelines, maybe you're focused on eating more fruit. Is it serving you or hurting you? This is what a group of researchers based in Iran did to ask. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we take a look at the evidence they gathered. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. So our team took metabolically compromised individuals and put them either on a high fruit diet or a low fruit diet. Now, the peeps that they studied were not actually diabetic. The metabolic problem of concern for them was fatty liver. Bad fatty liver, because milder versions of the problem are difficult to quantify. So to be included in the study, the person needed to have at least a grade 2 or 3 MAFLD. That means that the origin of the fatty liver was metabolic. Other causes of fatty liver were deliberately excluded. So were people who were morbidly obese. They ultimately signed up 
32 men and 40 women, the average age of which was 46.25 years. And then they issued instructions. To the high fruit dieters, they told them to eat four or more servings of fruit a day. And to the low fruit dieters, they were told to cap their fruit consumption to no more than two servings a day. The participants were encouraged to carry on their lives as normal and not to make any changes to their exercise routines or medicine and supplement regimens. Now, the fruit eating study lasted for six months. Along the way, the team did check in with the participants to ensure that they were following those instructions. And there were some delinquents who had to be booted out of the study. But when all was said and done, the high fruit eaters averaged 6.96 servings of fruit per day, while the low fruit dieters ate on average 1.65 servings per day. The team noted that the adding and subtracting of the fruit to the diet did in fact change overall dietary patterns. The big fruit eaters actually ate less sugar, and the low fruit eaters ate more vegetables. But everyone ate more calories. Aish. And if you're wondering, yes, those extra calories did show up on the hips of the high fruit eaters. But interestingly enough, the low fruit eaters got a free pass. Seriously, they ate more calories and managed to lose weight. The big fruit eaters were on average seven kilograms heavier after their six month stint, while the light fruit eaters were on average six and a half kilograms lighter. Wow. And the same pattern was seen in the parameters of liver health. The heavy fruit eaters saw their numbers go up, that is, their condition worsened, while the light fruit eaters saw their numbers improve. Similar patterns were seen for other metabolic parameters, for example, both fasting insulin and fasting glucose levels improve in the low fruit eaters. Skeptics would say, well, the difference simply reflects the weight gain. And this may very well be true, but the point is, a lot of fruit, when you're metabolically challenged, is not a health move. Don't be duped by the natural, full of antioxidants, etc., etc., etc. Sugar is sugar. And fruit is not a free pass to health, especially when you're metabolically fragile. You need to be extra careful. You don't have as much wiggle room as someone whose metabolism rocks. When it comes to the eat five fruits and vegetables a day for better health, err on the side of culinary vegetables, not fruit. And strive to obey the rule of thirds every time you eat. My suggestion if you're just starting out on your health journey is to be quite reductionist in your thinking. Classify fruit as a carbohydrate and then treat it accordingly. In terms of the rule of thirds, that means keep the grams of carbs around one third of what you eat at each meal. All carbs are not created equal, neither are all fats equal, but it's too complicated to worry about this on the first pass. Yes, there are nuances. For example, apples have a magic ingredient that makes them safer to eat. But you do need to time it right to get the benefits. If you look around, there's a link to a video which will explain more. And when it comes to eating carbs, timing is everything. Eating them earlier in the day at, and at the end of a meal will improve their processing. If you want to learn more about the rule of thirds, why not join the Better Body Chemistry community? You'll find the link in the description below to get the help and support you need to learn how to apply the rule of thirds to your genes and your life situation. Fixing your body chemistry is, doesn't always require extreme approaches. It's easier than you think if you know how. So if you're ready to begin the journey today to better body chemistry and better health, why not visit our website? And check out the resources we have. The advice is always simple to follow and based on real science, 
not hype. Know someone who is metabolically challenged and wanting to take a natural approach to optimizing their health? Share this video with them so they don't make the mistake of giving fruit a free pass just because it's natural. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.